Hello, beautiful nerds. I want to talk to you about destroying angel mushrooms. I am holding in my hand one of the most common species of destroying angels that grows in the eastern United States. It is called Amanita bisporagira. I want to qualify there are a lot of other mushrooms in the Amanita genus that are destroying angels, but they are uh, all characterized by being white all over cap and stem mushrooms that have a sort of a membranous ring on the stem, white gills underneath, and most importantly, a cap that doesn't have sort of ornamentation or any fiddly things going on. So Amanita is a giant genus. You have a lot of gorgeous mushrooms that many of them are delicious and edible, but uh, a lot of them have warts or striations, like stripy grooves around the edge. You have nipples, you have just all kinds of very fancy stuff going on. But with your destroying angels, it is just sort of a white uh, cap that doesn't have a lot of, um, well, any ornamentation whatsoever. And you have different, you know, species that have sort of a varying degree of shiny sort of pure whiteness in color. This particular specimen and many of the ones that I find where I live in North Carolina, uh, often as they age and mature, they tend to get a little dingy and get yellowish staining or a little bit of sort of brown own action going on as they get older. But I do want to uh, sort of go over the features really quickly for this mushroom and um, its fellows in the Amanita genus section Phylloidea. All right, so uh, first of all, you have, and I already highlighted this, really white gills underneath the cap. And most Amanita mushrooms do have white gills. There are some that have yellow gills or sort of off, um, you know, creamy colored things. But in the case of your destroying angels and other mushrooms in that section of the genus, you've got white gills going on. And there is um, also, as you can see, in the case of Amanita bisporagira, they're really tightly packed together and there is a little bit of a ring that separates them from the stem itself. You also have a partial veil. A partial veil is basically a little uh, protective layer of tissue that covers the gills as the mushroom is a baby and when it opens up uh, it leaves a ring on the stem of some kind. In the case of your uh, destroying angel mushrooms and Amanita bisporagira, certainly it is sort of membranous. So like it doesn't have a lot of flares or features or anything fancy going on, but it does tend to stick around, uh, which is really nice because a lot of Amanita mushrooms, they're, uh, they have fancy uh, partial veils or rings on the stem, but any kind of damage or, you know, you tap them and it falls right off. In the case of your uh, destroying angel mushrooms is kind of sticky and resilient, but it also isn't highly featured. And so it sort of just leaves a little bit of, um, you know, a ring or a bit of a skirt on a stem that doesn't have a lot of ornamentation either. Sometimes you have a bit of uh, sort of like a floofiness or stretch marks. It's a little hard to see in the light here. And then most importantly, at the base of the stem, you have uh, a really diminutive universal veil remnant. And what that means is you have uh, a cup of tissue at the base or a bit of uh, material that was basically protecting the baby mushroom before it popped open and matured. Amanita bisporagira is this sort of tall and gangly mushroom that has this pinchy and diminutive sort of measly universal veil remnant at the base of it. And so, uh, you know, as you can see with this specimen, it is a distinctive sort of cup of tissue at the base, but there are a lot of Amanitas where it's like this big goose egg that's really distinctive and leathery. Here is um, the view of that uh, universal veil on a mature specimen. So you can definitely tell that it's separable and different material, but it isn't really large or pronounced. And that is uh, something that is very... 
uh, distinctive to Amanita by Sporagira, but there are, as I said, a lot of other destroying angel mushrooms. And if you are sort of out in the field like me and you're a hobbyist, honestly, you're going to want to just learn to recognize Amanitas and learn to recognize sort of the different sections of them so that you can, you know, tell which ones are dangerous and tell which ones, uh, you know, are harmless that you may want to eat at some point. But when you get down into the nitty gritty, of these different species. At a certain point without molecular analysis, you may uh, just not want to assign a specific species name to it, or at least that's how I approach it. And so for me, I'm like, it is Amanita. The species section is Phylloidea. So, you know, that includes not just destroying angels, but also death cat mushrooms. Um, and so, you know, you're really, really dangerous, uh, but, you know, highly handleable. As you can tell, I have no fear of, uh, you know, messing around with it. I'd have to consume it for it to be a problem for me. Uh, so, you know, that section is a really good way to recognize mushrooms that may be more dangerous, but there are lots of other uh, sort of groupings of that genus that can help you understand sort of the different features and how to recognize them in large groups, if not to specific species. Because honestly, when you're in the field and you don't have a microscope and you're not going to do DNA analysis, you're better off saying it's Amanita section phylloidea. I am not going to bring it home and eat it. It is a beautiful white and stately mushroom in the case of Amanita by Sporagira. And, um, enjoy that experience and share it with your friends. Anyway, I hope you find a billion mushrooms. Let's talk again soon.